What has been the most heartbreaking thing you've personally witnessed? It was about 2am on a rainy Monday night and I was driving home through empty suburbs in Sydney. Suddenly I turned into a smallish road and was blocked off by an ambulance. I was about to reverse and find another way when I see two paramedics bring out an old lady on the trolley who was very much dead. These three were followed by a very old man, probably 80 plus, who followed behind trying to hold the woman's hand. He was bawling, falling over himself, getting soaked by the rain and shouting. He was shouting she's my soulmate. What do I do now what am I supposed to do? Something about an older proud man brought to their knees kills me. Crap. Okay here shows my age, but as the cool kids say, whatever. Back in about 1992, I was walking to a friend's place, when with no tire scream, there's a horrific car crash. I ran over to see a car had t-barred another at a roundabout. Canberra is full of them. Seeing as it was about 1am, and at the time this being nothing more than a sleepy hollow, a few people came out to investigate. At this point, my saint. John's training kicked in and I told someone to go call an ambulance. The situation is thus, the driver who rammed the other car smells like a brewery, and is dead. He's also the driver who caused the accident by pushing through the roundabout. I get to the other car, and there's a girl, she's pretty messed up. The steering column has punched her in the chest, there's blood everywhere. There are no crumple zones so her own car is smooshed against her. I tell her that I know first aid, and that I'm not trying to grope her as a joke, trying to figure out the extent of her injuries. But I can feel all her ribs on her left side fricked up, and even at the lightest tough, she's hurting. So I start talking to her, saying everything's alright, well it's not, but the ambulance is coming, and start making crappy jokes at her to keep her awake. Then I hear the ambulance in the distance, and tell her she's gonna be alright. She looks me in the eye, and says, why didn't I meet you earlier and dies. Turns out, 30 seconds can be an eternity. I've walked the same 40 minute route to work for about 5 years now. Every day I pass the same old guy and his German shepherd walking beside him with no lead, carrying an old battered tennis ball. I figured he went to the corner shop for morning paper or whatever. Anyway a few months ago there was no dog, and the guy was carrying the tennis ball, and has done ever since. This is sad and very touching. My mother died in July 2009 from a massive heart attack. She was in the hospital for a few months because of many health issues and her cancer had come back. I remember laying on the couch the morning she passed, because I had fallen asleep the night before, and kept hearing the phone ring. In my half asleep stupor, I just went upstairs. I remember thinking as I got into bed, wouldn't it be weird if it were the hospital calling I laid in bed and just listened as the phone rang again. I thought my dad would pick it up because he had a phone in his room, but he was out cold. I finally got out of bed because I couldn't get back to sleep and answered it. Someone from the hospital was indeed calling and asked for my dad. I knew exactly what they were about to tell him. I just went upstairs, knocked on his door, and handed the phone over to him. I then went downstairs and sat with my brother, who had fallen asleep on the other couch, and I felt absolutely numb because I knew what news was coming. My father came downstairs and just said that my mother was gone and we had to go to the hospital. My brother and I got dressed, and we all left to go pick up my older brother at his apartment. We just drove there in silence. We arrived, met a nurse, and they took us to her room. My little brother and I sat on the other side of the curtain because neither of us could bear to see the body. My older brother and father stepped around the curtain, and the nurse pulled a sheet from my mother's face. The next sound I heard was the most heart-wrenching as my father let out a soul-numbing scream and started crying. I could hear his heart breaking in that scream, which broke mine as well. To this day, it is the worst sound I have ever heard in my entire life, and I still hear it whenever I think of that day. A few years back a guy sat by me on the bus home. He must have been in his late 70s early 80s. He starts chatting to me for no reason which I don't mind because I like chatting to the elderly. They've got wicked stories. Anyway, I notice he is wearing a butterfly brooch on his cardigan so I commented it that it was nice and unusual. Clearly because it was a woman's but I thought he was giving zero fricks and wearing what he wanted. He responded that he'd bought it for his wife that morning in the town but then remembered that she was dead but he wanted to keep it because he knew she'd have liked it. I wanted to take him home after that. 
two of my friends in college were high school sweethearts. Due to a freak heart malfunction, the guy suddenly died while we were sledding my sophomore year. The girl remained close with his family, still calling his parents mom and dad. 10 years later, she was finally getting married to a new guy, but invited her high school sweetheart's parents as they are still close. The parents sat in the back row, and the father shook with sobs as he watched the wedding that should have been his son's. I finished my PhD last year and just had my graduation ceremony last week. For ages before it my parents had been fussing over me, but I didn't mind. They were just so proud and excited, and to be honest I was feeling pretty good about myself too. So anyway, the ceremony rolls around, and the university registrar is reading out all the names, one course at a time, when I notice there is one name on its own in the program. Receiving the posthumous award of PhD, missed on behalf of his daughter doctor, as they read out the names, all of the university higher ups gave this chap the biggest standing ovation, you could tell he was so deeply proud of his daughter, thankful for the reception of the whole graduation team, and absolutely heartbroken and tearing up at the same time. There were so many people visibly crying in the audience, and it seemed to resonate really strongly with me. It was such a big day for me and my family, and seeing the pride and sadness on this man's face really made me realize how important it is to appreciate family while they are still around. Amazingly, I'd held back the tears through this whole thread, but you you go and ruin it. About 10 or so years ago, I was sitting in the computer room doing internet things when I heard the doorbell ring. My friend neighbor from across the street was looking for his 4 year old brother. As soon as I said that I had not seen him, a blood curdling scream filled the air followed by call 9, 1, 1, call 9, 1, 1. Their neighbor had forgotten to lock their front door that day and the mother found the boy drowned in the neighbor's pool. He had been in there for at least 30 minutes and was about as blue as the sky. That day followed by the funeral was the most heartbreaking. I had been friends with a girl named Alice as long as I remember. Our parents were neighbors and also really close. We both had big families with lots of siblings and we were the oldest kids, so we kind of clicked in every way. She was my first best friend. So it was Christmas time in 2004. I was visiting her. We were talking about how she had a crush on my brother and other usual things that 13 old girls would talk about. I was drawing a horse for her. She loved horses and I loved drawing. It was a nice evening. Then we started about talking what we got for Christmas. I don't remember that I got anything special, but she got a vacation to Thailand. I was so envious that she got to go to Ko Lak with her family, but I was happy for her and wished her a wonderful trip. After a few days there was tsunami. Both parents died. Two of her siblings were never found. She and her small sister barely survived. The double funeral for her parents was heartbreaking. I remember the moment when two daughters walked behind the coffins to the altar, and the look on Alice's face. I lost my breath. She wasn't the same anymore. She had lost everything. There she was saying goodbye to her parents while comforting her little sister who didn't understand what was happening. She didn't have the chance to say goodbye to her baby brother or to her other sister. She didn't even cry. That was the last that I saw of her. She moved to another country to her grandparents. I did send her few letters, with drawings of horses, and saying how my brother is also missing her. She never answered. I think of her every time I visit my parents and see their house. We have a lot of good memories of us there, but I don't know where she is now. I can only hope that she and her sister are doing alright. My granddad crying as he kissed my mum's cheek and stroked her hair about 15 minutes after she had passed away. My mum was my grandparents only child. To this day I have no idea how they have managed to carry on. You. I had this favorite regular customer. He was this old war veteran that came into the store humming singing and always in a cheery mood. I helped him with the groceries because he couldn't read his wife's scribbles. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I thought maybe he had moved to a retirement home or whatnot, when he suddenly comes through the door and I am so happy, until, he asks for a job, I ask why he would need a job and then he explains he just came home from the war and needed money, I ask how his wife is doing, he she has moved to Sweden for safety, it quickly dawns upon me that he has dementia, 
he thinks he's 19 and before I have time to do anything he's out the door. I had to go to the back room to cry, because I couldn't help him and even though I only knew him a little, so that person was totally gone. When I was a patient at research psychiatric center, there was a woman who had been there for a few days before I taken in, and who remained there for a week after I was out. She would rarely talk, was completely unfocused, and they were switching so many medications around on her that she spent most of the day sleeping in her room. Eventually, in one of our group sessions, she began to open up about what it is that brought her to the hospital. This woman was in her early 40s, and had two daughters. The first one died 6 months prior to her entering the hospital. Then, a week before she came in, her second daughter was killed in a car wreck. And two days before she was taken to the hospital, her house caught fire due to faulty wiring and everything that she owned was lost. We all tried to console her as best as we could, and by the time I left two weeks later, she was actively engaging in conversation and even smiling a bit. She even spoke of how she was working with a friend to try and open a small business. The amount of tragedy this woman had gone through, and her ability to survive it all, put things in perspective for a lot of us. When I was a correctional officer, I would oftentimes escort inmates to and from the hospital for medical treatment. There was one inmate, Fredericks was his name I believe, who had been diagnosed with a heart condition. He was about 50 years old and a born again Christian, as many inmates are. He was always quoting scripture and seemed so sure about his place in heaven. Over a period of about 6 months he shed about 150-200 pounds. He went from being a relatively heavy set guy to skin and bones. I would usually be the one to escort him to and from the hospital. Another officer and I would sit with him for 8-12 hours a day. At one point, he had to be transferred to another larger hospital. So I rode in the back of the ambulance with him while the other officer followed us in the prison van. I still remember the conversation we had to this day. I was known for always carrying Jolly Ranchers in my pocket. He asked me if I had any that I could share with him. I told him I didn't, but if I did I would certainly share them with him. That was against the rules, but I don't think anyone would have said anything about me sharing a piece of candy with a dying man. I could see his hands were shaking, and I could hear the handcuffs and chains clinking. We had to wrap the belly chain around him twice because he had become so thin. He looked at me and said, I'm scared. I could tell he was holding back tears. I didn't know what to say so I just told him that he was gonna be okay. After I got relieved from my post, I told him I would see him next week. As my days off were coming up, I never saw him again. He died a few days later. I heard the state buried him because no family ever showed up to claim the body. I wish I had been able to give him some of my candy. I was 8 or 9, riding in the backseat of my dad's car on a really rainy day, heading home from my grandma's house. We pass this bus stop, which is right across the street from a McDonald's, and has a stoplight between the two. We're stopped at a red light next to this bus stop. And I'm watching this father and son trying to cross the street to get to the stop with their bag of McDonald's. In the heavy rain with no umbrella, the dad let the kid run ahead so he could get under the little shelter thingy, before our light turned and they wouldn't be able to cross safely. So the dad is stuck on the other side of the road as the cars start to move, and the poor guy gets hit with a tidal wave from a car passing him, completely soaks his food to the point where the bottom of the bag fell out. I will never forget the look of the feet he had on his face, standing there soaking wet, having just lost his and his son's dinner, and then they still had to wait for the bus. I think that was the first time I ever empathized with someone I didn't know. I felt so terrible for him. See? Thank god. I kept thinking the dad would watch his son get hit by a car or vice versa. Still feel bad for him, though he quells. A few months ago my stepdad. The only father I've ever known, told me he had to go into the hospital for a few tests, nothing major. Within a few days, the doctors informed me and my mum that my dad had to have a small low risk operation. No one was too worried but for some reason I just couldn't stop crying which is completely out of character for me. I remember seeing him off before he went into surgery where he looked into my eyes and told me he loved me and to look after my mum. 
I was being terrible and harassed my mum to take us home to get some rest before my dad came out again only to get a call from the doctors to say the operation had been delayed and my daddy wanted to see us. Unfortunately by the time we got to the hospital, he was already taken in. They said it would be an 4 hour operation. It was after the 6 hour we really began worrying and when he came out, we were told he was in intensive care due to some unforeseen circumstances. We waited by his side for days until eventually, very early in the morning I watched his heart monitor flatline and his lips turn blue. I think the worst part about it was that I denied him the chance to see us one more time because I was tired. He was scared and we weren't there for him. The most heartbreaking moment was walking out with a bag full of clothes when only days before, I walked in with the most amazing dad. Thanks Reddit. I really needed to let it out but I don't feel as if I can talk to my friends about it as a lot of them abandoned me when they realized I didn't have the motivation to go out anymore. And I don't want my mum to think I'm too hurt by it because she's only just begun to recover and needs me more than ever. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Your friends are idiots for not trying to support you. I give you all my internet hugs. A little one that always stuck with me. Driving home and seeing a woman putting her recently hit by a car dog into a cardboard box. The crap hit me pretty hard. Still not as bad as the next one though. In Iraq, a father brought his son to her base for medical attention. He was very ill. Turned out the son had been bitten by a rabid dog. If you know anything about rabies, you know that once symptoms show, it's 100% fatal. Watching the medical officer explain to the translator, who relayed to the father, that his son could not be saved. That was rough. The other one, the worst one, working at a checkpoint, we open up a trunk as usual and find the body of a young girl. I don't really talk about that one. I do some volunteer work with a special needs school near my home where they do some special Olympics type field day events twice a year. Most of the kids are developmentally disabled, but a few have physical disabilities like CP. After helping with the events for a few years, I got to know some of the kids better than others, and there is this one kid named Andy who has severe autism, mostly relating to sensory dysfunction. He rarely speaks to anyone, but this kid is freaking bananas about baseball. He memorizes stats and players and team rosters and can rattle off the most obscure baseball stats ever, and they are all accurate. It's incredible. Anyway, Andy is raised by his mom and grandmother, as his dad bailed out when he was very young. Two or three I think. One of the events we did at the field day was a kind of modified baseball game on a little field with big base baths for the kids and wheelchairs and big soft balls and bongo bats. Andy had tried to participate in the game for years but could just never do it. He would just get too overwhelmed. It was too much. He would wind up watching from his chair, and you could see that he wanted to be part of it so bad. The last fall I spent a couple hours before the baseball game trying to get him mentally prepared for the game so that maybe he would be able to actually take an at bat. I walked him through what it would be like and just tried to get him calmed down, and I gave him my hat to wear and a lead vest to wear. Like the ones you wear when getting an x-ray, it calms him down. I didn't expect that to change anything really, but to my surprise and delight, he wound up actually getting to the plate and staying there, unassisted, holding the bat up and staring wide-eyed at the parent that was pitching. His mouth was agape and he was breathing so hard I thought he might pass out. The parent lobbed the ball up to him, and Andy threw all his weight behind the bongo bat and freaking crushed that crap to right center. It cleared the cones by 30 feet, using cones for fence line. I was so happy I was about to bust, and after he was helped around the bases and stomped on the plate, he came back over to me and I high fived and fist bumped him and congratulated him over and over. Then he stopped and I could tell he was trying really hard to compose himself to say something, and he says can I come back later and do that again so next time my dad can see? I kept a smile on my face but couldn't stop myself from bawling like a goddamn baby when I heard that. Freaking crap. Crying again now. Kids need their goddamn dads. That one got me. Wow. Sitting in the waiting room at my Gino's office for my yearly lady checkup, a visibly pregnant woman comes out of the offices, back into the, the waiting room. She's crying and on her phone, leaving someone a voicemail, saying please call me back as soon as you get this. They can't find a heartbeat. They're sending me to go get another ultrasound. Please call me back. 
I need you right now. I'm so scared. I looked around the waiting room after she walked out and realized that every woman in there, myself included, had started tearing up. Absolutely heartbreaking. When I was about 14, my mom was bringing me and my friends back home from school. We all lived about 4 blocks from each other. We noticed there was an accident on the street before mine. After we got home we all, excluding my mom, walked to the accident to be idiot spectators. We approached a group of people that had already gathered and asked what happened. It turns out that a guy was riding his motorcycle back home because his wife's baby shower was winding down. Well, as he was turning onto his street a driver plowed right into him and he was killed instantly. He was about 5 houses away from his home. His wife was just sitting on the side of the road in shock. We left after that. I've never felt so bad in my life for being curious about a traffic accident in my life. Thank you for reinforcing my decision to never ride a motorcycle. Way too many idiots to worry about out there. My grandmother had a stroke about 15 years ago. She wasn't the same since. We would visit her at the hospice and she was like a zombie. Sure. Sometimes she would be somewhat lucid. She would recognize family members. She often doted on my father, which is weird since he was only her son-in-law. She would often yearn for home. And if my grandfather was there she would sit and listen to everything he had to say, not matter the pain that she was in, but she couldn't walk, and talking was more or less grunts while looking at pictures. Anyway, flash forward 4 years and my grandfather gets a quick diagnosis of bone cancer. It was a death sentence and a quick one at that. By the time he was in the hospital he was given less than 3 weeks to live. We did what we could to get him into the same hospice as my grandmother, but they couldn't work fast enough and he passed away within a 10 days. But my grandfather's wishes she was never brought to see him in the hospital. My mother, aunts and uncles held a private viewing just for my grandmother. She kind of knew what happened. She acknowledged to my mother that she knew that he was dead, but she remained stoic on the ride to the funeral home. She was wheeled in and up to his casket and it seemed to hit her. He was gone. She, for the first time in 4 years, actually stood up and reached into his casket to kiss him. It was like the physical horrors that she suffered didn't happen. She held his hand for 10 minutes, crying, saying love you I miss you and see you soon. When she said it, it wasn't perfect, but you understood what she said and that was incredible to us. After that she calmly got back into her chair and she asked to go home. She meant her real home and we knew it. So we did it. My uncle carried her up the stairs and put her to sleep in the bed that she shared with my grandfather for 46 years. They were married for 50 years when he died. But she spent 4 years in the hospice. My mother, my aunts and my uncles stayed with her while the grandchildren and the in-laws went to the interment. The whole experience brings me to tears just thinking about it. I don't think my words did it justice. I think you did your grandparents justice by sharing the story. It made me think of my grandmother when she passed away. I had to leave the room to not startle my wife when I started crying after reading it. A few years ago a 13 year old kid was hit by a car right by my house. I saw a couple of firefighters tell his suit wearing dad, rushing over from work I would guess, that his son was dead. The poor guy just collapsed and the firemen were holding him up by his arms like you would a wounded military person. Oil. My family's best friends had twin sons, and one was born without a brain. He died after several hours spent being held and loved. My mom is a nurse at the hospital where the babies were born, and our friends asked if she could be the one to escort the baby down to the morgue. I held him after he died, and then my mother carried him away. The last thing I remember after walking out of our friend's room is the mother in the hospital bed, her husband with his arms around her, both quietly sobbing as they held their remaining son. I went with my own mom to her office, where she laid the baby on a piece of ugly blue material that was all the hospital provided, and gently wrapped him up. She had to put Darko stickers on him, as if he were a piece of faulty merchandise. I just remember sitting quietly with tears streaming down my face as she gently placed our friend's beautiful baby in a metal cart and wheeled them away. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.